Hello and welcome to this video. In this tutorial, we're going to create a flashlight companion drone. This drone will automatically follow the player and it also has a working flashlight. By pressing F, you can switch between two modes, follow mode where it flies around the player and attach mode where it sticks directly to the player. The project file and the drone model download link are both in the description. If you run into any issues, just leave a comment and make sure to check the pinned comment for any updates or fixes before you start. All right, let's get into the tutorial. I imported the drone asset into the project, which I downloaded from Sketchfab. I'll put the link in the description. Big thanks to the creator of this mesh, Suyog Modak. When you import it for the first time, its size might be too large. You can adjust it by opening the asset, going to the build settings, and changing the build scale. Here, I set it to 0.02. After entering your desired scale, make sure to click Apply Changes to confirm it. The next thing you need to set is the pivot point, which should be placed at the center of the mesh. To do this, open the modeling mode from the top left. Go to the X Form section. Click Edit Pivot. Then click Center and finally hit Accept. I want to rotate its blades using a material which I've already made a video about. You can check that out. So, I open it and find the material that's applied to the blades. Luckily, in this case, the blade material is only for the blades themselves. Now, open the material. Since I've explained this before, let's quickly set it up. Add a rotate about axis node and connect it to world position offset. For the first input, Use Rotate Vector. Then, connect Object Orientation. Hold 3 and left-click to create a constant 3 vector. Right-click it and choose Convert to Parameter. Name it Direction, which will control the rotation direction. Change its color to blue and make sure the other channels are set to 0. Next, Hold M and left-click to add a Multiply node. For A, use the Time node. For B, hold 1 and left-click to create a constant. Then right-click it and convert to Parameter. Name it Speed to control the rotation speed. For the third input, connect Object Pivot Point. And for the fourth input, connect World Position. Set the speed parameter to 2 so that the default rotation keeps spinning. Now you'll see it's spinning, but not correctly because it rotates relative to the pivot point. If the pivot isn't positioned precisely, the rotation will look off. You can adjust the pivot slightly until it spins correctly. Now it should look much better. Now I create a material instance for the rotor blades and assign it to the mesh. With that, the drone setup is done. Let's move on and add it to the character blueprint. Now open your character blueprint. Go over to the viewport section, as you can see. Our camera is already attached to the character using a spring arm, and that's how it stays behind the player. We're going to use the same method for the drone. So, click Add Component and add a spring arm, and make sure it's a child of the character's mesh. Now reset the location and rotation of the spring arm back to zero. Next, we need a socket so the drone can attach to a specific point on the character. To do that, open your character's skeletal mesh and find the bone where you want the drone to follow from. For example, I'm going to use the left shoulder this time. Right click on that bone and choose Add Socket, then give it a simple, clear name. Now go back to the character blueprint, and in the spring arm settings, set the parent socket to the name of the socket you just created. Now you can add the drone and make it a child of the spring arm. Then, in the spring arm's details panel, adjust the drone's location, but before you move it, set the target arm length to 50, and then adjust the position.
Now let's test it. As you can see, it looks like it's stuck directly to the character, so let's make it feel more natural. First, on the spring arm, enable use pawn control rotation so it rotates with the mouse. Then scroll down and enable camera lag and camera rotation lag, and set both of their values to 5. Now it looks much better. The drone might still be slightly tilted, so adjust its rotation until it sits correctly. Everything is working now. Next, add a spotlight as a child of the drone. Now we have the flashlight effect, and it follows the mouse movement. So now we're at the final step, making the drone interactive. Now we need two Boolean variables. I'll name the first one is attach, which we'll use to check whether the drone is attached to the character or not. The second one will be is timeline playing, and this one is used to prevent the F key from being spammed while the timeline is still running. Set both of them to false by default, meaning their checkboxes should be unchecked. Next, we need an input key. You can either search for the key you want or add a new one. Then click the keyboard icon at the top right corner and press the key you want to assign. I'll set mine to the F key. After that, add a branch node and connect is timeline, playing to its condition. Then, from the false branch, add a flip-flop node. This node will switch between output A and B every time the key is pressed. Now. Add a set node for is attach and connect it right after the flip flop. We'll use output A for attaching the drone and B for detaching it. Make sure to check or uncheck the box on each set node correctly. True for attach and false for detach. Next, add another branch node after the sets and connect is attached to its condition. We'll handle the true branch first, the attach logic, and then move on to the false one. Now, set is timeline playing to true, and then add an add timeline node. Double click the timeline to open it, then add a vector track and name it socket offset. Go back to the event graph, get your spring arm, and from it, drag out a set socket offset node, connect it to the update pin of the timeline. Inside the timeline, right-click and add a key. This will automatically create three keys, one for each axis, X, Y, Z. Click each key separately, set its time to zero, and assign the value based on your current socket offset, the one you made earlier. Now go to the viewport. Then open the details panel for the spring arm. Set the target arm length to zero. Now start adjusting the socket offset until you find the exact position where the drone should attach to the character. Once you've found the right position, open the timeline again. First, change the timeline length from five seconds to one second. Then right click and add key again this will create three keys for X, Y, and Z. Set the time for each key to one and use the new offset values you just found. This means the timeline will smoothly transition between the two offset values within one second. Now select all the keys, right click, and choose Auto to create a smooth curve between them. Next, Drag from the spring arm again and add a set target arm length node. Then go back to the timeline and this time create a float track named arm length. Add two keys, 
the first key at time 0 with a value 50. The second key at time 1 with a value 0. Right-click on the keys and choose Auto again for a smoother curve. Now connect the outputs of each track from the timeline to their corresponding set nodes. At this point, I think you've already got the idea of how the flow works. We'll repeat the same process for camera lag and camera rotation lag. Since both have the same value, we'll just create one single float track for them. The first key should have time 0 and value 5, and the second key should have time 1 and value 32. Now, connect the output track to both of them. We also have an output from the timeline that fires when it's finished, right after that. Set is timeline playing to false, so we know the timeline has ended. Next, drag from the spring arm and add set enable camera lag and set camera rotation lag and set both to false. Finally, add set use pawn control rotation and set it to false too, so when the drone attaches to the character, it won't rotate with the mouse. Now, get the spotlight. Drag from it and add a set intensity node. Set the value to zero, so the flashlight turns off when the drone attaches to the character. All right, let's test it. As you can see, when we press F, everything works exactly as we wanted. Although there's still one last thing left, the drone's propeller rotation. When it attaches to the character, we don't want it to keep spinning. To do this, get the drone mesh in the event graph and drag from it to add a Create Dynamic Material Instance node. Now, find which material index the rotating blades use. For me, it's seven so I'll set the element index to 7 in the node. From the return value, drag out and add a set scalar parameter value node. In the parameter name, type the same name we used in the material, speed. To make the effect smoother, I'll animate the rotation speed using a timeline again so it slows down gradually instead of stopping instantly. Since our current default speed is 2, set the first key to 2 and the second key to 0 at time 1. Now, connect this timeline output to the speed parameter node. Let's test it out. As you can see, everything works perfectly. Now let's move on to creating the next state, detaching from the character. Since the rest of the setup is just the reverse process, simply follow my actions carefully. I won't explain much from here.
For detaching, connect it to reverse from end, and for attaching, connect it to play from start. Make sure all your set nodes are correctly set to true or false where needed. Now let's test it. Everything seems to be working perfectly. There's just one last thing. When the player moves or runs faster, the drone's propellers should also spin faster. So, let's go back to the event graph. Add an event begin play, then connect it to a set timer by event node. Create a custom event, I'll call it time, and connect the red execution pins between them. Set the time value to 0.5, so it triggers every half a second. Now, from the left panel, get character movement. Drag from it and add get velocity. Then add a vector length node. From the return value, add a greater node and connect it to a branch. Set the condition to check if it's greater than zero. Before that, add another branch that checks is attach and connect the false output to continue, so the logic only runs when the drone is flying. Now, duplicate the set speed nodes we used before for propeller rotation. Connect one to the false branch and keep its value two, the default speed. Duplicate again for the true branch and set the value to 12 for faster rotation. And one more thing, we forgot to enable looping in the set timer by event node. Make sure the looping box is checked. Now go ahead and test it. Just one quick note. If you want to change the drone position or any other setting, make sure you also update the timeline and the set nodes used in both states. You can't just adjust the current position without changing those. Otherwise, the transitions won't line up properly. And that's it for this week's video. I hope you found it helpful and learned something new.